Welcome to St Bennet's. On Monday to Saturday there is a weekday celebration of the Eucharist in church and you're very welcome at any of those services. But on Sundays, because we can't fit the regular congregation in with the required social distancing, we're continuing online for now. If you're new to St Bennet's or have just found us, you're welcome to find out more about us by visiting our website www.stbennetschurch.org. That also gives contact details for the clergy and you're very welcome to be in touch. But now as we prepare to worship together, we keep a moment of silence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As brothers and sisters in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, 
to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. When Elijah reached Horeb, the mountain of God, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel-Meholah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, 
and every mouth that has not kissed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified And one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately after Jesus fed the five thousand, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, 
he was there alone. But by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught Peter, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? What's the tone of Jesus' voice there, do you think? Is it a stern rebuke? Is it resigned? Exasperated? Or is it a still, small voice, almost a gentle encouragement, more of a, why doubt if there's no need? In my mind, it's become the latter. That's what I hear as the wind ceases and the disciples marvel, as their fear evaporates and is replaced with awe in the stillness. At the beginning of this gospel episode, Jesus retires to a quiet place to pray. By contrast to the quietness of the mountaintop, the disciples find themselves caught up in a squall. We're not told that this makes them afraid. They're fishermen and so perhaps storms are par for the course. No, it's when Jesus walks out to them on the water that they are frightened, terrified even. Then Jesus speaks out, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. As we know, this is a command often heard in scripture, in the law, spoken through prophets, by angels, by Jesus, do not be afraid. As a command though, it's a strange one, not always effective. Don't be afraid, it's just a film. The monster's just special effects. Don't be afraid, this roller coaster is perfectly designed for this. Don't be afraid, air travel is the safest form of transport. As a command, it only really ever works if you trust the person who makes it, and perhaps especially if they are there. They need to be a reassuring presence. So Jesus identifies himself as he says it. Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. The response Peter makes to this command relies on it being Jesus there. If it is you, command me to walk on the water. I think this response is brilliant. Peter, having been afraid, but now commanded not to be, finds his courage and asks to be commanded to walk on the water, as if he's boldly saying, Lord, make me bolder. If it is you, if you tell me to, then I could do it. Tell me to be bold and give me an occasion to step out in trust. And Jesus commands. Peter steps out. 
but then he feels the strong wind. He becomes fearful and cries out to be saved. Jesus catches him and then says those words, you of little faith, why did you doubt? What are we be being given to understand here? Surely to have faith enables us to do what we couldn't do when we were afraid. But perhaps is it also that if we do step out but fail, then we will be saved. Everything will be OK. Jesus will always be there to catch us and rescue us. On one level, I suppose I believe there is a fundamental truth there that ultimately things are in hand. This is Jesus. This is God with us. And Christianity teaches, somewhat absurdly and counterintuitively, that we should believe that all things shall be well in the end. But if we're to read scripture well, we ought not to get carried away with anything too simple or as glib as have faith and nothing will go awry. At the end of John's Gospel, after the resurrection, when Jesus is commissioning Peter to lead the church, his final words to him predict Peter's death at the hands of others. Rather bluntly, he tells him, Peter, this life will crucify you. Now follow me. Today's gospel looks a little different from that perspective. In the light of Jesus' resurrection, we find the anchor for our hope that all things shall be well. Death and fear are conquered. But as Jesus' final words to Peter suggest, death and fear are still realities to be faced down in our own life. Faith, then, looks not like an entry ticket to a happy and comfortable life, the one where Jesus will always catch us. Faith looks like living in such a way that we believe the unbelievable, that all things shall be well, that the reality that underlies all things beyond death and fear is goodness and love. But being saved is not being rescued from every danger, every enemy, every misfortune. Being saved is, for us now, to be able to live, to live boldly in a dangerous and frightening world. Salvation is experienced as a life that has seen fear and finds it cast down disempowered. It is to live boldly, trustful and unashamed, as St Paul says. It is to live beyond the reach of fear because we've been grasped by goodness and are learning to trust. Which is why I'm so struck by those words of Peter. Lord, if it is you, Command me to come to you upon the waters. Lord, make me bolder. Command it. Because I will trust if you command. And I want to step out boldly. Having been commanded not to be afraid, Peter finds his courage. And he is bold. To ask to be commanded to be bolder. That's a bold request. To ask to be commanded to walk out in the face of fear. That's a terrifying prayer to utter. And even if he is afraid thereafter, it's still his small triumph. He can always ask again, make me bolder. Every time it's asked, it's, an it's another small defeat of fear. I know that I am not a bold person. I like safety, staying within the rules. I prefer the easy way. I'm very happy to let others go first. Where angels fear to tread, so do I. Who dares wins? 
so I'm happy to come in at a safe seventh. I'm not bold. But I want the boldness to pray. Lord, if it is you, command me to step out. I would like the boldness to pray to be bolder. I would like that faith that gives us the courage to live boldly, that encourages us to hold the fear, to own it, to admit it, and then to say, command me, Lord. I want the boldness to ask to be commanded to take a step into the void, into the wind, into the storm, and into the darkness of a world that in so many ways can be so crucifyingly awful. I want to trust that despite the darkness that overwhelms, our underlying reality is good and beautiful. And that's by no means to say I believe we will be spared the darkness, quite the opposite. But I believe we can say that we are saved when we're no longer afraid of it. I want us to be faithfully bold, taking the harder road, standing up, speaking the difficult word, willing to be uncomfortable, to make the choices that don't comfort us. Let us be bold as a church, even knowing we may sometimes succumb to the fear and fail and retreat to our old comforts. Let us then ask again, Lord, if it is you, command us not to be afraid. And if you do so, then we might just have the boldness to ask you to command us to take that first step from fear into trust and salvation. Amen. We affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, we thank you for the Church and its witness to your goodness and love. We commend to you all who lead. Among them are Archbishops Justin and Stephen, our Bishops Stephen and Dagmar, and Anna and Zach at St Bennet's. Sustained and renewed by your love, may we, the Church, reflect your goodness, care and compassion and be faithful to our calling to be bringers of hope and reconciliation to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hold before you the world and thank you for its beauty and diversity. Grant wisdom to our leaders and make us mindful of our interdependence. We pray for any who go hungry, have nowhere to call home or are in any kind of need. 
bring healing and peace to places of conflict or disaster. And at this time, we pray particularly for the people of Beirut and all who were killed or injured in the explosion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we bring before you this city of Cambridge and all who live and work here. Thank you for all of the ways people have reached out to support one another at this uncertain time. We pray especially for all whose livelihoods have been threatened by the pandemic and for all who are anxious about the future. Nourish and strengthen our relationships with each other as we navigate the months ahead and help us as a city and nation to work together for the flourishing of all, especially the vulnerable and marginalised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, you know what it is to suffer. We pray for all who are in any kind of pain, bringing before you those known to us who are distressed in body, mind or spirit. Comfort and console all who are vulnerable and isolated, and uphold those who work to bring healing, care and support, remembering especially at this time doctors, nurses and care workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the lives of those whom we love but see no longer. We commend into your hands those who have recently departed, including Maureen Matthews and Shiona Geit. And we remember those whose year's mind falls at this time, particularly Arthur Butler and Connie Mason. May your gentle presence be a balm and comfort to all who mourn, especially at this time of restricted social contact. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, when we are tossed about by the storms of life, you say, do not be afraid. Trusting in your promise that you will always be with us, we commend all that we do and all whom we meet in the week ahead to your loving care and protection. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who is sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Our Lady Mary, Saint Benedict, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. I invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion using the words in the video or the order of service. gathered us around the table of your Son to share this meal with the whole household of God. In that new world where you reveal the fullness of your peace, gather people of every race and language to share in the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.